Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. Welcome back to Class of Friday, where we look at a G.I. Joe classified series figure every Friday. Since we looked at Roadblock last time, I thought we would look at Roadblock again this week, but this time at the standard retail release of Classified Roadblock. Since I had them both out, and since I enjoyed this one so much more than the other one, I thought this would be a good time to look at it. Let's take a look at the packaging. The box has the window pane that shows the figure and the accessories. It has the G.I joe classified series logo and this is roadblock it has some package art here showing the character and i think this looks like terry cruz i can't be the only one that sees that the artwork continues to the side of the box where we have a profile of roadblock and an action pose and this is all pretty good i like it this is number one in the classified series that's right the very first gi joe classified figure well not exactly deluxe snake eyes is number zero so technically the second of the classified series. On the back of the box we have the generic classified poster artwork that we got on all of these first wave classified figures. On the other side of the box we have these symbols that represent his specialties. This one means he is a fan of the San Diego Chargers. This is R2-D2 without legs. This means his phone is fully charged. And this is a syringe for steroids. Let's open this guy up and take the figure out and take a look at Roadblock. Here is Roadblock out of of the box with his accessories. This uniform for Roadblock is based on Roadblock version 2 from 1986. You can see it's the same basic idea but updated for the larger scale and this is what I think they should do with classified figures even when they are based on a vintage design. They should be updated to take advantage of the larger scale. Let's take a look at Roadblock's accessories. He didn't come with a lot but he had this really big rail gun. It fits pretty firmly in his hand hands and it has two grips it has this foregrip here you can you can fit it in his hand and he will not drop it uh, so let's take a look at this this obviously is not a traditional machine gun which you would expect roadblock to come with he is the heavy machine gunner but let's look at this thing this is a science fiction weapon it is not based on anything in the real world it's very long it's in a silver color but it has some red and blue highlights it has a grip at the back on the top and a grip kind of in the center so he can hold it kind of low at the hip there's this other grip here but that would be very difficult to get in the figure's hand it has these two long prongs in the front and the silver paint fades to a translucent blue that's a cool effect it also has a removable magazine this would not be for bullets this would be a battery pack or something like that i'm not sure you should count this as a separate accessory since it just goes in to the weapon and there's no other place on the figure to store it. Roadblock included only one other accessory, this knife that fits in this sheath on the vest. The knife is in silver plastic. It has some detail. It's fine. I do like the removable knife. Uh, this is pretty limited for accessories on a classified figure, but the vintage Roadblock figure didn't come with many accessories either, so I guess that's understandable. Let's take a look at the articulation on Roadblock. The articulation on these classified figures is always is really good. He has a good range of motion on the head, up and down, all the way around. Hindered maybe a little bit by this bulky vest, but he can still move his head pretty well. He has butterfly joints at the shoulders. He can lift his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He has a twist at the bicep. He has double jointed elbows. He has a twist at the wrist and in and out hinges on both wrists. He has an ab crunch, hindered a bit by this vest. He can still twist at the waist. He has a good leg split, pop the legs back in their sockets when you move them back. He can swing his leg forward at the hip, not so much back, but pretty well forward. He has a twist at the thigh. He has double jointed knees. He has a twist at the boot cut, and he has hinged and rocker ankles. Let's look at the sculpt design and color of this guy starting with his head. His head is bald and there's some marbling in the plastic on my example. I don't know if that's a 
quality control thing, but the face sculpt is good. He has a black beard and a thin mustache. This is an update of the version 2 Roadblock. It's the same basic idea, it's just updated a bit. You can tell it's the same guy. He has this vest, which takes some elements from the version 2 tactical vest, but has some additional details. The vest is a separate piece that goes over the figure, and I do like that. It allows them to add a bit of depth to the figure. The vest is kind of a mint green with some darker green, kind of brownish green spots on it. He has a white G.I. Joe star over his left vest pocket. He has a gray belt with some pouches and such. He has a gray strap on the right side with the sheath for that knife. That gray strap detail does continue to the back, but it has some spots of gold, and it has this blue round device that I think we all assumed was like a communication device. Not sure what it's for, but that's my guess. On the right side, we have some spots of gold. Then we have this red segmented strap with blue highlights over the right shoulder with a gold clasp in the back. His arms are bare and muscular, as you would expect from Roadblock. He has a big lion tattoo on his left arm. This was a mistake from the tattooist that was supposed to be a Tiger King tattoo. Easy mistake to make. He has red and gray gloves. The lower half of the figure is in a dark gray, and I do like that contrast to the lighter gray of the vintage figure. I think this is an improvement. The waist and legs are pretty generic. These were used on other figures. Nothing too special here. They do have a texture for the cloth. He has pockets on both legs, and he has a gold knee pad on the left knee. Only on the left knee, not sure why it's just that knee. He has black boots with gold boot armor highlighted with red. This gold boot armor was another element they tried to carry through on these early classified G.I. Joe figures. I think they've kind of abandoned that element now, but a lot of the early first wave figures had this gold armor. Overall, I like this roadblock figure more than the Target exclusive roadblock figure. It gets the basic idea of version 2 roadblock, but updates it in some ways that I like. That being said, this is not on my list of favorite classified figures. It's just a little bland. There is another classified roadblock figure that's based more on version 1, and that looks really good. I don't have it. I will try to get it, and I suspect that will be my favorite version of classified roadblock. That was my review of version 1 of classified roadblock. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more classified G.I. Joe and vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews. You can find me on social media on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. I can only continue doing these videos with the support of my friends on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. You can get your name in videos like the names you see scrolling on the screen right now. Thank you for watching. I'll be back soon with another classified G.I. Joe toy review. Until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.